Hello. Uh, this is Flotilla Friday for uh, January 7th, 2022. Um, and sorry, I should have said this before the recording started, but just to let you stop know. it. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It just, it's just mundane. Um, I am going to have to cut out a little bit before the top of the hour because um, I'm going to get a uh, PCR test because I'm Aww. thinking I might have uh, might have mild asymptomatic, um, you know, Omicron or something. Hope it works out well. Yeah, yeah, I hope it works out well. Either way, I hope you yeah. feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think lots of D3, zinc, and vitamin C. <laughs> it don't work out too much because, yeah, that'll help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of water. Sleep. All the basics. Liquids. Soup. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> the record, I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for the recording. <laughs> just for the recording, just, just to make sure. <laughs> I like your question, Vincent. Mm hmm So that was our um, question from the end of last year's last meeting um, in terms of what we could reflect on um, after being away for a few weeks. Um, yeah, curious if that's something you guys wanted to uh, start with and thank you, Pete. I was waiting for the uh, hack and beat. Yeah, I don't know how I got off off track and not making it happen. Um, I the, yeah, it, this is probably a good thing to cover. Okay, so imagine what Flotilla could achieve, do better, and do more for 2022. And reflecting on the last year, I think would be like, yeah, what I loved, what I wish, and what I wonder could be possible. Um, hmm. Should we take a minute to like reflect on it? I might, um, oh, man, I don't have a notebook. I kind of want to do each one separately. That's what I was just like go about. around. Uh, yeah, because it's a lot yeah, of time to cover sense. and it's not just a That's result a of this it. one conversation, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. What I loved is that Flotilla was a place where Flotilla was a place, and, and the reason why I keep coming is Flotilla is a place where um, I think those who are really trying to figure out how to get stuff to work together and flow together. Um, are coming to talk about the details. So sometimes we talk about it in, in broader terms of where we want it to go and what we think is emerging and what we think is important. And sometimes we're talking about it in detail of you know this how, how to get these two things working together better. And I, I feel like the momentum grew at the end of the year for across the board, not just in flotilla, but across the board for, for actually manifesting stuff. Cause I know that that was some of the frustration last year's we're talking, but not a lot's happening unless you're in your own silo. And so I feel like there's more opportunity for Flotilla to harness that. What I see as kind of a new trajectory of really trying to stick stuff up against the wall and have other people react to it and really starting to bring stuff together in ways. I think, I just feel like people are more ready for that, ready to give up a little pieces of their own stuff to bring it together with someone else. We're all playing chicken here, huh? <laughs> um, I was I was wondering if I should share that HackMD or if people want to go there. I'm I'm there. Um, is it, is there anything on it? Uh, yeah. Conversely, I, I only see one online me. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. I'll try hitting refresh and you try hitting refresh. 
Uh, so now I see two people. Somehow it got disconnected. I see three. Oh, got it. Now it's there. <clears throat> oh well, I'll I'll throw out the the love. Um, I mean, I I love coming here just for who I mean, particularly the three of you because I feel like you're the the ones I see most um, here uh, are um, in, re in relation to um, the problems that we are grappling with. Um, and, you know, I, I, I feel similarly, um, inspired and frustrated this is gonna this is gonna verge onto the i wish and and wonder but you know that that we're we're all grappling with the how do i do what i need to do and and not afraid to admit the the frustrations which i appreciate a lot I, I um, you know, it's it's hard to remember the whole year last year, I think. Um, I think Flotilla did a bunch of stuff last year and, and I can't really remember a whole bunch of it. Which means I should go look at the uh, the wiki. But um, the, the big reason for me <laughs> um, is uh, is the people. Yeah, I would I would echo that. I think um, I love that we used the calls to make progress. And I felt like we were, we had a really good balance between like staying on track in, in like the realm of our conversations. Like we only talked about politics like 5% of the time, which is like pretty good. Um, and so a lot of groups, so yeah, I feel like we were, were like serious but not solemn. Like we talked about really important things, but we had fun while doing it. Um, and so, and and I think the the group size was pretty good. Um, like it, because it was small enough, we didn't need to like introduce ourselves every time we got into the call. And that's something that I feel like is a barrier for larger groups that are like with a lot more people coming in because then you spend the first 45 minutes of an hour or an hour and a half call just doing like introductions. Um, so like that momentum meant we could like kind of build on top of the conversations each week without having to like recap it for new people. Um, so some of that was actually really nice. Um, and yeah, I felt like I agree with Wendy. It, it was a really a good um, place to just if you had something that was like a burning frustration, like throw it against the wall and um, try to figure it out. So I wish is when you, um, when you say all the things you don't like, in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the it's the positive spin on that. Um, in in so other what, retros, uh, I've uh, we we've called them delta. You know, what would we like to mm -hmm. have changed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it also could be like, what's my wish for this year? Yeah. You know, like it could be more of the same. Please, you know, <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to write, uh, I wish for a new website, smiley face. <laughs> yeah. I, w I wish for just like two or three things to find their way to weaving together, like really operating together. That would be very cool. Um, yeah.
uh, over in Massive Wikiland, Bill and I are working on a different way to sync wikis, and um, we're pretty happy with the new thing that we're we're playing with. So, it it might be that the wiki actually gets usable. Mm, that's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We'll we'll see. Yeah. I'm going to be a crash test dummy next week. For, Indeed. Uh, <laughs> Or Mike, Michael was smart enough to volunteer for crash test dummy. <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Because yeah, I think one of my wishes is that um, this was one of the meetings where we took very consistent and very good notes, thanks mostly to Pete. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I wish I could eat make it easier on myself to like actually go back to those and to like, or yeah. find them or like look at all of them at once at a big picture. Um, like right before this call, I went back and I, I looked at last, um, last um, meetings notes, um, which is when I remembered that we posed this question. Um, and I was like, oh man, yeah, if I had more time, I would have like opened up everyone in a new tab. I did it through the GitHub route. Um, and so, yeah, I wish I could have like made it easier for me to just like scroll through all the notes to like get refresh myself since it's been a little while. Yep. The, the caveat for our new sync thing is that we would still be we would still be working on Obsidian mostly, which um, Obsidian is actually awesome, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to. But but once you're used to it, it's awesome. So. Maybe I'll join. Uh, yeah, I have to install, reinstall Obsidian on my new computer. So I don't know if I remember the, <laughs> remember the steps. <laughs> I wish I remembered the way to install Obsidian with Massive Wiki. <laughs> uh, I I don't even think I would, I I wouldn't bother with the Git stuff. Um, okay. Because and, we should just try the the new way. And okay. the, the the idea is, you know, the the emphasis is on the dummy. <laughs> Um, cause <laughs> you know, I like I'm on Git, but don't, you know, I'm not an, I'm, I'm Git phobic as I, as I referred to it, um, GitHub, um, and don't have obsidian and don't have sync thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm the, the test to like, can somebody who has no knowledge of, and none of this stuff installed, um, become functional i'm with you <laughs> that's where i'm at too yeah and um you know the the uh my bet is on the under but we'll see <laughs> on the under what that, that it, that's a, a sports betting term oh. like, you know, <laughs> is is the expected thing going to happen or is it going to be not less or more and, <laughs> The under is like the under. Both teams the teams combined are going to score less points than this yeah 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 the expectation is <laughs> so more wishes for this year hmm i wish um You know, I, it, it's it's a magic bullet wish, um, but for a way to um, to all benefit from each other's success mm -hmm. um and that you know there there's you know th this this happens all over you know where we've all got our thing and we're trying to figure out where our thing fits in and work on our thing and wendy i think you spoke to this in in um ogm a little bit about like you know trying to connect other people and and you know decrease siloing but you know part of the nature of the 
the siloing experience is just for all our well-meaningness. It's just like we can't figure out exactly how to how to feed ourselves by you know helping other people do their thing. Um, and it's you know it's it's a it's a capitalism problem. Um, it's a you know money society problem. Um, but uh, you know, I do w wish we could figure that. It's it's really funny. I was realizing um, as I came to my computer this morning that I actually had a dream last night where I was looking at a trove redesign that that Vincent had done, and I was I was really loving it and thinking, wow, this is this is really cool. I I, I love this, and. And I got to my computer this morning and I said, did that, it, it felt so real. It was just such an everyday kind of like, you know, oh, you know, Vince shared his screen and showed this cool thing. And, and did that really happen? And I, you know, clicked on. Did you write it down? <laughs> yeah, what did I mean, it look I can, like? I can visualize it. It was, it was, it was cool. It was, it was very, it was very minimal. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it wasn't there. <laughs> Um, you're doing very, but, good, very good marketing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're making me want whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can. A minimal trove? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to Mr. Feature Creep here. Like, yeah, I do want to know what you <laughs> <laughs> Please draw it up before you forget it. <laughs> uh, the good thing about it is it's it's not hard to draw up because it was, it was very, very minimal. It was cool. <laughs> Basically, uh, some you know, a lot of white and some some black rules and a little bit of type. But I'll, I can I can <laughs> probably put it together at some point. Um, anyway, um, just yeah, uh, you know the 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 figuring out, and I hate to use that term, figuring out um, the realization of um, a structure that, that allows us to afford to, to help each other um, as much as, as we could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a very amorphous and, and pie in the sky wish, but that's, that's my wish. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that come out. I don't think that's that pie in the sky. I think that's one of the cornerstones because I agree with you. What's holding a, most people back from collaborating is the infrastructure for sharing credit, for lack of a better way to say it, and getting and 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 benefiting from that shared credit. It doesn't it doesn't seem to exist in any way that satisfies anyone, right? And so I'm starting to see that some of that, and I I, I do think it's a, a huge cornerstone that needs to be laid down before people are really gonna be free flowing or more free flowing about collaborating. Um, and so it forces everyone back into their little silos because it's the only way that, 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 the, that the thing that they have to contribute can manifest. Because if they do it with someone else, they, they don't benefit from it anymore. It's interesting. Well, and it's, it, it's even if you can, it's, it's, the, it's the whole thing of valuation is like determining what, my expertise at this and your expertise at that are worth to each other or, or you know, all that stuff. And, and um, you know, instead of from, from each according to his or her ability to each according to his or her need, right. you know, I mean, that's obviously pie in the sky too, but. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I, I've talked to people. I mean, Zeke is one of those people who's working on how um, your expertise plays into how you, you know, how to track expertise so that it could then that could be data that could be used as part of a of an economic ecosystem of evaluation of people's contribution. Um, time, of course, is pretty is pretty straightforward and easy one as soon as you have the metrics for for calculating. Um, you know, I there definitely I'm hearing. And this is what's inspiring about having meetings like this is, you know, is hearing that those things are happening. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I'm starting to see this past year and kind of my wish for the future, whether it happens in this meeting or not, but it could, is starting to sense make what those cornerstones are 
right? What, what is, you know, what are the things that are holding us back that need to come first? There's a lot of stuff that are hurdles and obstacles and things, but what needs to come first, second, third. And if, and if first is a problem, like, oh, this economic thing's not going to come for a while, identifying the projects that'll help us get to that thing, recognizing that that's still a cornerstone, doesn't make it any less of a cornerstone because it's not ready yet. Um, and then trying to do what we can to help that that thing happen faster. I would be more willing to put time into that, even if it's off my own track, um, outside of my silo, if I knew eventually it was going to come back and, and help me with the thing that I was doing. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's a piece that's missing right now is people don't, pe- people go, yeah, that's great. Let me know when that's finished and two right. years go by, right? And so I, and, and if there was a way we could start to sense make the priorities a little bit. Um, I think we could draw energy, time, talent, resources towards the things that need to come first, recognizing that we could all then like, like Legos build on top. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm hearing a couple, I'm hearing kind of in, in the conversations I'm having, I'm starting to go, I think there's like three in my mind now that are major cornerstones to enable a lot of the other stuff that we wanna do. And, um, and, and so that's kind of my wish for this year is to play a role in helping to figure that out and put it in a visual or in a chart or in a something that other people can look at and first just do we agree, not agree, and then use it as a reference point, you know, to go, oh, wait, this is where I fit in. Because if we don't start saying, hey, this is where we're going and here's a amorphous gray, not fully defined map of how we might get there. If we don't even just start, start trying to do that. I think the silos continue to be kind of inevitable. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Michael. I think you said yeah first. Well, I was just going to say the, that, um, Vincent, you were part of this conversation, I think, and, and Pete, you and Wendy not, but there was a somewhat, you know, glimmer of a promising uh, exchange in a um, uh, CTA, um, Collaborative Technology Alliance meeting about, you know, to the effect of gee, what if we really were together, like building one platform out of, you know, all the things that we, you know, we we just seed, okay, like this person's developing the chat feature and this person's got the like, you know, search, you know, function and this person's gonna do the group architecture and we're all gonna use the same, like code and maybe we'll skin it differently and emphasize different things in our own branding, but we're all gonna be interoperative. Um, and, you know, that that's a great concept to sort of spread among other, um, other platforms, but it's a really heavy lift. Um, but I, I, I dream of that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I feel like we need? I feel like the CTA needs to raise um, enough money to pay two people. One, a really good, like, corporate headhunter. And two, someone who's, like, trained in, like, sociocracy. And then those people need to work together to basically, like, figure out where people go and, like, like in a company, how this works is like you hire someone who like finds you a CEO and finds you a COO and like builds a team. And I feel like all of us that are working on our own projects, our strength is like, it's like, there's like a filtering function. The people who end up in the CTA that are like, have a smallish team and that are working on their own projects are probably like visionary builders who are not as good at like, team building and fundraising. And so I think you need to bring in people that are experts at that because that's like what (laughs) probably most people are lacking and you need to just pay them to basically like unbiased in an unbiased way, do the work that like we probably won't do ourselves. Like I feel like there needs to be someone facilitating that. Um, And if we 
any one person with their one project tries to do it, I feel like it's a different type of thing to like all get under Trove or all get under Hilo or all get under Factor, like then like someone coming in and say like, okay, look, I'm looking at all these projects and this is how I feel like they can fit together. Um, and you each can, I mean, the, so, the reason why I bring up the sociocracy models, cause I think it, it would be good for each person to have like stewardship over their own piece, but there also needs to be a way that those pieces are part of a cohesive um, super system. And like the goal of a system is like that the, the purpose and the mission of the subsystems needs to be in alignment with the purpose of the, you know, the larger system. And so I think, you know, each project could be a subsystem of a broader project. They need to be in alignment is the, is the you know, is the thing. Yeah, and my, and my thought is like in alignment to what? I, I feel like everyone's waiting to figure out where the alignment is going to. And I'm starting to go, what if we designated what, where we think it's going at the very least, right? I don't know. I'm, I, I've worked with volunteers for so long and in so many different organizations that I've known, you know, and, and a lot of this is volunteer, right? It's how do people get motivated towards one goal when they're not paid and no one's telling them what to do and there's no clear hierarchy. And, you know, and, and to me, it goes back to that, what you were saying, Vincent, it was kind of reminding me of the, where people's motivation come from. And the best I've seen is when what we're trying to do is clear. Right. And everyone's, and then they, everyone gets to decide for themselves how much of their time and project they're going to put towards this one, this combined goal versus their own personal goal. And it can shift over time and that's fine. Right. Instead of it being a level of commitment where you're all in or all out somehow, you know, which is the way um, working feels to me. Mm, yeah. Also, you're muted. One of, the, one of the project needs to make money to be able to then like, <laughs> like, yeah, I think um, because almost none of the projects in the CTA from my angle are currently making any sort of money, like it's hard to like, um, like if, if there are 20 projects and none of them are making money and each one of us wants to support each other financially, like there needs to be someone who's bringing in money to like be able to like then bring other people in and help, you know, and like to make it a symbiotic relationship in my opinion. And so whether that is the CTA itself that's doing the fundraising um, or whether that's like one platform ends up, you know, doing a big raise and then wanting to like, um, I don't know, share that somehow. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's it, it. It's hard for people to give up their own thing, even and, if it's and, for money. And also, I mean, it's, I don't, uh, I mean, to me, I, I kind of feel like, you know, I have what limited resources I do as an individual and as um, a company. And, um, you know, I'd be, I, I'd be willing to, to throw that in a pot. Um, it's just, you know, I mean, figuring out what the, what the, you know, it, I think, I think everybody, nobody is well-funded. Well, some, some people I think are, my guess is are, are fairly well funded just because of what they have brought to it, you know, their previous activity, you know, their personal um, uh, resources. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, in, in a capitalist, mode and and even more ideally in a in a co-op co-opt mold um having a stake in everybody having a stake in everybody else's thing seems like a way 
the way to go there. And I was going to say, you know, metaphorically, I sort, I, I feel like I always come back to food metaphors, but you know, like if we all had, you know, if we were a group of restaurants and, you know, it's not that we want to all be part of a chain, it's just, you know, like I've got, you know, a salad place and th that place is a, you know, a coffee the place and this is, but, you know, we all say, okay, we're going to have these principles of, you know, organic ingredients and fair trade and like labor, you know, paying our people this minimum and, you know, working on this uh, with this energy source, you know, we can, we can afford together to chip in to build this, you know, solar collector that's going to power our business. You know, those are the kinds of things, these infrastructural things that we need to cooperate on that doesn't stop us from being individual brands with individual points of emphasis. Um, so I don't know, I throw that out there. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, sadly, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work on my phone and if I can get my wife to drive, I will uh, um, see if I can continue, <laughs> come back in, um, but I'm gonna have to jump. I don't know if you should. Huh? I don't know if you should. Okay. I mean, you're welcome to. I certainly, but maybe we should. <laughs> maybe we should all leave. I don't know. Huh? Um, you're, it's you're feel, It's feeling to me like it's either going to the conversation is going to take off in a new direction and be really rich, or it's going to <laughs> exactly. Or it's feeling like it's coming to some semblance of a conclusion. You know what I mean? Um. We um, haven't really gotten to an I wonder yet. Like, and I actually, wonder what I, would happen if. I put Michael's, I wonder if we can all benefit from each other's successes into I wonder instead of I mm, wish. Mm. And, and um, Vincent and I have been filling in I wonder. Michael, maybe you should try to get on the phone and, yeah. and we'll see if we, we okay. take off or land. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to wrap a little bit before the, the bottom of the hour. Yeah. FYI. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pete, do you want to share your? I wonder. I maybe I I I have a. It's interesting. I have a little bit of a different take um, on on some of the topics we've just been talking about, and a large large part of it is um, because because my crypto is doing okay right now, and it's taken some of the pressure off of you know making sure that I'm making enough to make make sure that we uh, eat and, and have a place to live. Um, so, so it's really nice not having to like really worry about scrambling and going, well, I can't, can't do that because I can't afford to. I, I feel more like, you know, for the past month or so, I've been like, well, I could work on that and I don't really need to see even credit, you know, necessarily. I don't, don't need to you know, it doesn't need to turn into something right away. Um, so I hope this continues. The crypto might like completely blow up. And then, you know, next week I might be going, oh my gosh, I, I can't even, I can stay for 10 minutes and then I have to go back to job hunting, but we'll see. Um, so so that it take, took that pressure off of that table. Another thing that I've kind of noticed, um, largely maybe through Flotilla, is these silos that we find ourselves in, Vincent and I have these separate silos. I'm doing massive and he's doing trove and and we're friendly and they you know they we pass stuff over the the APIs or whatever um, or the the interconnectivity standards or whatever. Um, but they're really silos and and I'm not going to do a lot of trove stuff and he's not going to do a lot of you know massive wiki development stuff and it's just the way it is kind of. I think the the silos are kind of okay. Um, so maybe a thing that I've really enjoyed about Flotilla is, is the way that we come together and we each have strong opinions about where we're going and what we're doing and, and we're fairly solid about that. And, and so then the conversation is really generative because you get these, um, you know, um, different, different viewpoints about the same thing. How can we interoperate, right? And how can we, how can we do discovery of, of you know, um, how can we keep track of con 
contacts people how how can we discover who needs what and those kinds of things um so i i feel like it's it's really tempting i i was in another discussion yesterday it's really tempting to say oh there's a silo and there's another silo and they're doing almost the same thing and they should merge and i'm like yeah you know it's actually okay if we have these generative places that are separate and even doing a lot of potentially kind of duplicative work as long as we keep the discussion open so if there's stuff we both need then you figure out what it is and if there's stuff that really is ex an exact duplicate then you can commodify it between between everybody right um but it's but i i also the the discussion yesterday was about oh let's collapse these silos because it would be a lot better and it's not actually obvious to me that that's true um the i i feel um, I, I guess I've felt this way for a long time with the OGM and the, the Plex around OGM, the, the uh, flotilla around OGM. Um, a lot of the generative positive stuff comes out of um, kind of like uh, there's a saying, um, strong opinions weakly held. Um, right. So having a real point of view and, and not saying, oh, somebody else has a different point of view and we should merge them, you know, the points of view are actually really important as long as you're not like super stuck on it so that, you know, you, you can't move off of that just because it's your opinion. Um, so um, I think the, the, the thing that I think or the, 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 the problem I continue to see and actually another one that came up in the discussion from yesterday, the problem I continue to see is what I think of as uh, in computer terms, it's called service discovery, kind of. Um, who, who's doing what? What are they doing? How, you know, what do they need? How can I help them? Um, we don't yet have a good way to do that. Even like Flotilla, maybe the best, my best experience, CTA is probably another one where I'm not there yet, but um, Flotilla is the best kind of like, oh, this, these are the things I'm working on. And I wonder if anybody can help me on, on that, right? We, but we don't have a good way to do that in an announcement kind of way um, and a good browsable kind of way. Um, we don't have, um, uh, we don't have the thing that I've always wanted, which is matchmaking people on people doing matchmaking on top of the databases. Um, uh, so the the silo problem for me is not so much that we work in silos or that I, I feel like silos are kind of inevitable and they're not bad. Um, they're only bad when we don't share. Um, and so then um, we don't share if we don't know what to share, right? So I feel like that's the that's a core problem. Um, another the discussion yesterday. Um, another thing. Uh, the, the person in charge was trying to. I I, I kind of realized that the the problem that they're trying to solve um, is um, essentially transaction cost and discovery cost and things like that. Um, so there's a old, um, at this point old, it's funny that I say old, um, uh, there's an old uh, paper called The Theory of the Firm um, by Coase, Ronald Coase, I think, um, and he said back in the 50s, he wrote a paper that said, okay, so here's the deal and why we have companies that come together. The reason you have a company is because the overhead of doing business with each other is smaller inside the, the company walls, right? You have a, a, a pre, you have a bunch of stuff pre-negotiated, right? Uh, how much is it going to cost me to do this? Um, or what do I need done? There's somebody inside the company that's taking care of doing the matchmaking between, you know, resources and, um, and resource sinks, whatever you would call them. Um, there's, uh, the their, the internal economy is a lot simpler than the external economy. Um, you know, you you figured out how to trade hours uh, between departments or something like that, and then that you call that good. Outside, you have to worry about setting up a contract, negotiating the price, um, coming up with the dollars for it, um, uh, paying taxes on the dollars, all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff goes away inside the company walls. So. Um, 
we we come back around again to this you know now we're now we're a bunch of um uh sovereigns um and it's like how do we make a deal there there isn't a pre uh you know we don't have a pre-negotiated way to have a, an agreement that you're going to do this and you know in return i'll do that you know later and so we're we're like groping around back for the the new theory of the firm um, I have to mention in between then and now uh, in the late 80s, maybe early 90s, probably in the early 90s, um, uh, another economist, Yokai Benkler, um, wrote a paper called Kosa's Penguin. And he said, the reason that we see big open source projects um, is because, and I forget actually the argument now, but um, he said there's a new structure, the open source consortiums that are coming together and things like wikipedia and stuff like that the transaction costs have changed and so we get things like these big collectives of of action and now i think it was it was a, a good paper at the time and captured a zeitgeist kind of uh, about why we take collective action but there's something beyond that where um we're hunting around for how do freelancers come together um, and work together when we need to, and you know, have already figured out. Um, actually, just the way uh, Vincent was saying, it's cool to come to this meeting because we already we've pre-negotiated all the intro stuff, right? And we know what we what where we all sit and stuff like that. So that reduced transaction cost means we get to work faster, you know, together. There's we haven't extended that to our actual projects really as much, and. That's what we're looking for. I, part of uh, another discussion, I'm, I've been poking around a little bit talking about a community currency, um, a token. Um, and uh, I had a really interesting discussion with David Boval, who's been working on a community currency, more or less actually a set of community currencies for a while. Um, it turns out he's been working on it for six months or something like that with other folks. Um, and we had a, a productive discussion about, <laughs> um, uh, he, he was of the, the, the bent, it's like, Pete, why are you, you know, reinventing the wheel, you know, just, just join my project. And I'm like, well, maybe I should. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, so we had a, a great discussion about what we're, you know, what we're working on, what we're, um, so uh, mine, mine right now, the code name for mine is Sprig, um, and uh, his currency is the, the core one is called Boz. Um, uh, and Vincent, I know you've been talking about, uh, you know, really, you've been really thinking about uh, folding some kind of token based um, uh, credit, giving people credit, giving people compensation um, thing. So probably you want to continue to, to talk both both me and and David as we kind of explore into it. David is going a little bit slower and I feel like he's building a bigger thing. When I said that, he's like, it's not bigger, Pete, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm thinking of doing things, something like as fast and, and, and simply as possible. So I, I still feel like yeah. the thing that I want to do is like just super fast and simple. Did you want to do something on the blockchain or off chain? Just like uh, the the I it would be really tempting to do something not even blockchain. David started talking about a really cool mutual credit system he he designed for Airtable. Doing an Airtable, he hasn't built it, but you could set it up as everybody everybody's Airtable account is a separate wallet, or every account Airtable account is a separate wallet is the way I understood it. So you might have a couple wallets, you know, yourself in different mm. Airtable accounts. Um, I, for me, the interesting part of it is how it intersects. I, or I guess for me, the interesting part is um, at least a little bit of distance between the people uh, giving and getting value with the token and, and vice versa. So, um, a, a, a typical a classical community community currency is like in a town or something like that, and everybody gets little coupons mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and you you buy and sell goods and services in the town, right? But you go to another town and nobody cares about your currency. Um, 
uh, so if we didn't use a standard blockchain, I think you'd kind of fall into that, right? It's like, yeah, it's not that interesting because once you get outside of OGM or once you get outside of OGM plus Flotilla plus Metacogs plus CTA, it doesn't go anywhere, right? But but if you use a, a common blockchain, a, you know, a, one of the big blockchains, then all of a sudden you can get other people interested in, and you can say, hey, you should join this ecosystem but if you really want to, you can always trade your way back out of it into, right. you know, into Ethereum or whatever. For me, I'm, I'm actually wanting to stay pretty far away from Ethereum. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, so the the chain I would the chain I'm looking at is Solana, um, yeah. uh, and then the chain that uh, Vaz David stuff is 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 on Polkadot. Um, Hmm. Yeah, my my suggestion was to like prototype not on the blockchain, and then if it's starting to like work within a smaller container, then you could always um, copy the the social design and change the technical infrastructure. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that lately. Is like there's so many people that have been contributing to Trove, and I feel like I I. Like, I'm like, well, I can't pay you right now, but <clears throat> I want to somehow um, be able to at least solidify like, hey, this is an idea that you came up with. And I want to like be, I want to just like put that down so everyone could see it. And then, you know, maybe that does or doesn't actually result in anything later, but like that is the sort of accounting system you would need if you wanted to backtrack and to be able to have the necessary information to do the sort of contribution um, rewards later. And so like, I guess I'm trying to just figure out what is like the minimal system of like accounting for people who are contributing to each other's projects in a way that that can somehow be used later by the projects to decide how they want to actually like move forward, right? Um, and like part of that for Trove is the curation of things and so um and i was checking out campus co-evolve um but yeah part of it is like <clears throat> when you create an object on trove um you can create an object on behalf of someone else so like if i add a project i can like create a project where i'm the admin or i can say like this is on behalf of like George, George's Koval um, project. And so, um, and I can put their email. I'm just the curator, I'm not the creator. And so like there's different levels of contribution that people have. And it's important to like differentiate between, between those. Like this is my project or this is a project that I just helped somebody else put on, but it's not actually mine. Um, so there's different like levels of, of contribution. So I've been working through like, what are those different tokens? And at the same time, like taking down contributions just in a very like, you know, just in an air table for now, just to kind of like have that, that record. Um, I like, I would really love to like be able to go to someone's profile on whatever network it is and then if I were to go to my profile I can see like all the, the ideas that I like contributed to that platform like even if like I don't get rewarded for it it's like there's some public um record that like that was an idea that they agree that I came up with that they incorporated into their platform so like for example I stole the map feature from Luma um they have this like check-in map and I was like oh my god this is so brilliant but you know what would make it even better if you added a check-in question where people, instead of just putting their pin on the map, they have a question and then you can look around the map to see people's responses. And so um, like I built on top of their intellectual property and I was like, but how, is there a way for me to like link back to Luma and tell everyone that like this wasn't, part of this idea was my idea, but it was building on top of someone else's idea. And if that, that idea makes Trove a lot of money, like, yeah, I, I, Luma could get some of it because like they helped. And so, but that's like not how the world works right now. And I don't know if that's how it should work.
Yeah, I just wanted um, about the, the, the non-token notion. Um, I don't, I, Wendy, I know you were there. I'm not sure, uh, Pete, if you were yes, yesterday at OGM when um, uh, Gil was talking about um, a developing an investment fund for, um, as, as Jerry was calling it, green arounds. Um, you know, to a, a private equity like firm that um, bought uh, existing businesses to um, to turn them around and then co-op them, <laughs> or you know, do you know various things? I mean, it sounds like it's a little bit. You know, he's got he's got some financial partners um, looking at things that do function within real world economies. I mean, you know, fiat economy as opposed to token economy um, might be a, a bit of a, a you know, a, a first step, let's say. Um, and I think the thing that I worry about is like, okay, you know, if we, can tokenize all the efforts of the people who are, are working on these things. That's great, but there are things there are things that we don't bring to the table. It's like going back to that, you know, restaurant metaphor. Um, okay, you know, everybody's good at this and good at that, but you know, who's going to build the massive, you know, the capital investment to build the massive solar collector that's going to power the, you know, the appliances for this group. Um, that's the thing that we can't do, and we need to bring in other people to really, really do well. Yeah, so I just want to riff for a second off of what I hear you were saying, Pete, because I thought you did a really great reframe and then kind of where the conversation was going from there about how do we integrate efforts, right? Back to that, it's I hear us weaving both Okay, what are the good things about being in silos? And I was thinking about that too, in terms of the work that I'm doing and trying to choose where I'm putting my time and effort and why and paying attention to why I end up going off kind of on my own to do some things for a while and then bring them back to the group. And I heard an echo of that and what you were saying, Pete, right? In terms of sometimes, and so I was asking myself as we were, as, as you guys were talking about why is that? Right. And, and realizing it was kind of goes back to the very, very beginning before you even got on, Michael, we were talking about how is it that we take notes and we were showing pieces of paper and note cards and stuff. <laughs> right. And, and it was making me real, this whole conversation is making me realize back to kind of the human capability for creative thinking and innovation really comes when there's, when there's really low friction right, to iterating or brainstorming or, or, and that friction can come and I came into the room with a bunch of baggage and an angry attitude today and I just kill everything that gets put on the table, right? It's not necessarily technology, right? It could be all sorts of things that kind of stop and jerk our thinking and keep that, what, keep what's emerging from emerging. And so whether it's, I need, I'm an introvert or I, I'm a deep thinker, not many people want to go there with me. So I've learned over my many years to go off and do that thinking by myself because I can flow at a faster rate with my own thinking. And I need to figure that piece out first, whatever that piece is, it's trying to emerge through me and then bring it back to the, to the group. And so I kind of heard that and what you were saying, Pete, like I have, I have my own project, you have your own project, like everyone. And to a certain degree that, that there's a benefit to that. Because it's our play space of where we get to iterate something and see how it can be in the world. But the piece that's missing is what I heard you just saying too, Michael. It's like, how do we fund the things that are going to become the collaboration piece? And the world is asking for new things that cross disciplines and cross silos because the problems are so complicated. They can't be solved just in one silo anymore. We used to kind of get away with it. It wouldn't even necessarily be the best solution. Sometimes it was fine, but sometimes I think as time has gone on, whether it's a social justice thing or a climate action thing, or a, 
you know, uh, um, uh, mental health thing or physical health thing. A lot of these things have been in silos for so long that they're not benefiting anymore from, from cross-pollination of ideas and they're, and they're rigid in their silos. Back to what Pete was mentioning too, right? So how do we get the funding to come in to enable it? How do we get people, resources, thoughts, energy, time to contribute, not taking away from the individual silos as Pete so eloquently pointed out, but contributing to the whole of the thing that needs to happen, recognizing that the thing that needs to happen next must, must be, I can't get past this. It must be a combination of silos, right? Otherwise we're just, we're in the same, we're producing the same stuff from that, that, that is feeding, feeding us right now. And we're trying to get something to feed us something new. And I feel like that's the major barrier is the, is, is the lack of cross-pollination. We're just, that's the way we think we, we don't think, I mean, we've trained ourselves to think in silos, but we think associatively we think when creativity happens it's not usually like staying in its lane it's usually bouncing all over and pulling from different spots and doesn't care where it's coming from or whether we've labeled it math or psychology or english or it came from a book or it came from a movie or we don't care right it's just coming and so how do we how do we enable that and i think everyone's bumping up against those walls um and and so i wonder what would happen <laughs> If this flotilla space became a space for, for conversation around what's that, you know, and that's what we've been doing, but I, you know, it's to me doing even more of that sense making of how do we bring these things together and what sort of starting with the thinking of what we need to do, um, recognizing that it needs to start in that thinking space because we don't know how to do this yet. <laughs> And Vincent, I think, you know, yes to what all the things that Wendy just said. And, and also, um, when you were mentioning, you know, that the CTA needs that, that like, those outside someones who are, who are not the builders themselves, you know, I almost wonder if, if some of these conversations don't need to have somebody who is purely about the, you know, whether, whether it's a, a, a token economy or, you know, or outside charitable funding or, you know, funding of whatever kind, all about, okay, how does, how does value exchange layer on top of this? You guys, you know, all have great ideas. How do we, how do we frame this up in a way that allows you to interact more freely and a product to emerge from it, um, or products to emerge from it. Um, mm, yeah. You know, and I, I wonder if we want to invite, you know, different people, a gill, uh, you know, whoever to, to a meeting like this to, to talk about those ideas. What I think, I, I have a really cool idea, which is like, what if in February we picked, so right now there's just four of us, so I'm going to use the example of four. What if we picked four days, right? Um, each day gets assigned to a project. So um, February the 23rd is Factor, February the, um, the 4th is Massive Wiki, uh, February the 18th is, um, is Everyone's Wisdom, uh, February the 19th is Trove, um, and then for that whole day, we block out the day and we each have like some time in advance to like basically plan a, like a design sprint or like a workshop where we all are like, like, hey, yeah, we're coming into the space and we know we're like just going to like <laughs> spend our whole day working on Michael's project for like, you know, basically the, for the whole work day um, with some breaks and some fun time here and there. Um, and if it was in person, that could be cool too. But I think like, and Wendy and I are going to be doing like one of these in person on Wednesday. Um, but I think like, it, it just, like, I always come up with the, the thought that's like, if we were all working on, um, on one team together for like, like, what would we get done in six months? It would probably be pretty fucking nuts compared to like 
the what we build separately, we probably would build something that's, you know, not just four times bigger than what we can build in six months. It's going to be like factors of that. And so maybe just doing some small experiments like that and, um, you know, <clears throat> could be cool. I like it. I like that too. And it prompts me to think like, Vincent, you have something that's very op operable, right? Like somebody has an idea and if it works for you, you can, you can iterate on that really quickly. The stuff that I'm doing is more conceptual and I'm only just getting to a point where I'm starting to put stuff down on paper. So it also prompts me to prepare for that day, right? To say, how can other people help me? Which is a different question than I'm asking myself, yeah. right? And, and that's, that there's a level of accountability there. That's not just like a 10 minute overview or 15 minute. What, yeah, here's, here's the latest thing I'm working on, but how, if I had hours of other people's time to work on my stuff, where would I start and where would I want to get to ideally, you know, and then, and then having fun with that brainstorm session. Um, and I think it would also, I'd love to have the end of it be, and how does, what are we taking away from this that contributes back to the whole? Right, not that it has to, just that it, the question comes out, right? So that, um, how does it weave back? It's kind of getting into weaving the world, kind of, right? Except instead of it being a podcast, it's a project brainstorm or project. Right, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, there could be a role dedicated to that. You know, like one person could be <laughs> kind of taking, uh notes on the experience and how what is learned from it can contribute to other projects um and yeah there could also be yeah like who who is a good person um that could help us all think through designing those sessions right like so if you had one person to like sit there and say like hey you have a team of 10 people coming to your house um in a week to all do whatever you want to do um that is going to help you reach your goals and also help the world right like what would you do um and like i think there is like actually a whole skill to that right that that good managers are probably really good at or people who have a lot of experience in like um actually scoping out like project management and science prints and stuff like that and so um is that you know who out of all of us is the strongest at, at that or is that something that we would benefit from actually like bringing someone in who can help all of our projects with the sort of project management aspect of things right like as a as a flotilla of freelance projects um and ecosystems um do we have someone in our uh in our ranks who um is like guys you, you're just wasting time like <laughs> come on this is <laughs> And I'm saying that because I come from the bias, like I've never worked for a big corporation um, and I've gotten yelled at that I should go work for a big corporation for two years, but I'm like, it'll crush my soul. And <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, I, I have worked for big corporations a fair amount off and on. And, you know, there are things that I definitely miss about it, both in terms of resources and, you know, templates for, for, you know, projects coming to fruition on a timeline that, you know, is, is viable for, you know, a budget and, and uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a whole other conversation in itself. Um, yeah. So I, just, just to let you know, I'm at the test site in line and uh, we'll, we'll have to jump momentarily. Um, my, Wife has been extremely <laughs> <laughs> patient, <laughs> um, but uh, but I probably am going to have to go soon. But maybe we can continue this um, next week and and talk about some of the brass tacks of it. Well, yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, and let me just throw out like what you're describing, Vincent, is certainly in my wheelhouse. No question. To me, that that was a given, and and seems so obvious to me that when you started talking about it, I was. Why are we to, oh yeah, right. That's a skill. Like I, <laughs> so I'm happy to hold space for that. I think you're pretty good at it too, Vincent. Actually, I think we all have that, that yeah, thread in there. So it may not even be that it needs to be something separate, but I'm happy to have 
uh, spend time having side conversations to enable people to make the most of that time, even though I know people could probably do it on their own. Um, it's nice to have someone to just bounce it off of. And then to, to also just ha- help people um, go, okay, this is the piece that you need to get out of it. And then how could, how could we make sure that, that what we iterate today serves the group as well and comes back into the fold. And again, it doesn't have to, but um, I think helping the one person is really the goal. But if we can weave it back in, in some ways, or we can make sure the conversation at least goes there. I think that that uh, would be more iterative for other people too, to then weave it back in and see how it connects with them or how, if we were doing a section of Trove, then help people imagine towards the end, how that might then benefit theirs or how, if we designed it just a little bit differently, how it could, you know, serve the next project or whatever. Yeah. With my project management hat on, it it sounds like um, it it sounds like the assignment from hell kind of um, to get a bunch of people uh, pulling together on one day. And so uh, we can talk about it next week. But a different way to do the same design is to have each project have a week, and then you spend you know six or eight hours of of time on that project that week. So you start the week um, with a with a a check-in meeting um, and kind of get tasks assigned, brainstorm what what people are going to do. And then you have a deadline at the end of the week, um, or maybe Thursday actually, um, to to kind of come together and say, okay, here's what we we've we put together. Um, so to kind of distribute that one days of work over um, over a week. And I think that it, it's a it's a different approach. Um, might yeah. be might be more effective. Might be more crazy. Yeah, and I'm I, curious what you guys would vote on because that was actually my initial idea, and then I was like, "Nah, that's hell. Let's actually just do it all in one day." <laughs> they're the they're both hell in different ways. Um, so doing it all in one day means me personally, all I, I all I have to commit to is is taking a day and going, "Okay, I'm not going to get anything else done. I'm going to do something cool for Vincent." Right. Um, but then it's like, oh, wow, if we don't all coordinate the right way, that we can blow the whole day, basically. We can get a little bit, you know, we can get one quarter of, of the work done that we could have done if we were all decoupled and, and actually working. Um, everybody might slow everybody else down. If you distribute it, then it's like, oh, great. <laughs> you know, my whole week, a part of every day is going to be worrying about Vincent's project. And oh, my gosh, it's just going to screw up my whole week instead of one day. But conversely um i might actually get something accomplished you know that i i can probably make fit into my week getting a bunch of stuff accomplished <laughs> oh michael you're muted if you're trying you're muted to this whole time yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> hi hope you feel good yeah i agree there's there's a trade-off here so um there, there is, and, and I hear you in my ear, Pete, talking to Jerry about keeping the first steps of weaving the world simple, yeah. right? So, so just starting something with something that's maybe a couple hours focused on one person, hour and yeah. a half focused on one person, yeah. instead of trying to make and yeah. see what happens, see how that's it a, flows and see what comes of it. Is it enough time? Did it feel like too much time? Was there not enough prep? We need a mural board so everyone really can iterate together, whatever, right? You know, what is it that that helps facilitate the flow of people's um, contributions? Um, and, it, and, and acknowledging the fact that each project and each person's thing, initiative or whatever it is, is going to also look and feel different and maybe have a different flow to it uh, may also determine... You know, and maybe as a group, we decide it's like a once a month kind of thing, which doesn't feel like enough when we're trying to move things along. But when we're trying to create a new process, um, then maybe maybe that would be a lot, actually. I don't know. I, I like the idea of starting small and customizing to projects. Yeah. Um, yeah I want to hard stop right before the, yes, the half. We're good. Um, so let's pick up stuff uh, next week. Um, I want to pick up, maybe we can also do a slash now page. Everybody can do a slash now page. Um, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> let's talk about it next week. And then, okay. um, and then, and then we should work on the aggregation, aggreg- profile aggregator too. But cool. Next week. Yes. Awesome. Um, 
cool. I have to go right. <laughs> I have an idea now, <laughs> but I can't share it now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I want to uh, hear it later. It's awesome to be together, folks. Yes. And I loved your idea, Vincent. I really think this is propelling us forward. It's great. I agree. Awesome. See you next have a great week, weekend. Everybody. See you guys soon. Bye.